Usually, the water surface in the bay is calm. It is like a swing on which no one is sitting, swaying gently to and fro. But imagine what happens if someone were to take hold of the swing and, after lifting it up, suddenly release it. The swing pitches forward and backward and then subsequently returns to its former state. The seawater in the bay behaves in the same manner. After a low atmospheric disturbance passes, there is some degree of pitching. This is called harbor oscillation. Just as a long swing will pitch slowly and a short swing will pitch more rapidly, a long bay will pitch slowly. The Ofunato Bay in Iwate Prefecture is long and narrow. Once it begins to pitch, it continues on a 40-minute period. This is called its natural period. Next, let's consider what happens when the pitching of the swing becomes larger. If force is applied at the moment in which the swing has pitched backwards, its pitching will steadily increase. This is referred to as resonance. The water in the bay pitches with the first tsunami, and when the bay water is on its return pitch, the second wave comes. If the timing is just right, the bay resonates, and the pitching increases steadily. The farther into the bay it goes, the bigger the tsunami grows. In the case of the Chilean tsunami of 1960, the waves were on a 40-minute period, exactly like the natural period of Ofunato Bay. Resonance took place and was especially severe in the farthest reaches of the bay. In order to prevent this sort of disaster from ever occurring again, over a seven-year period, from 1960 to 1966, a major construction project was undertaken in all the areas of the country affected by the Chilean tsunami. Most of the construction involved building coastal dikes and sea walls. In the inner part of Ofunato Bay, there is a considerable amount of cement shipping, with boats frequently coming and going. Therefore, the construction of a high seawall would interfere with routine business. Because of this, a tsunami breakwater was constructed at the entrance to the bay instead. This breakwater closes off the entrance to the bay up to a maximum water depth of 38 meters. This left the bay entrance for passing boats at 200 meters wide and just 16.3 meters deep. Since the entrance to the bay has remained open, tsunami can, of course, still flow in. However, since the entrance to the bay is narrow, the amount of water flowing into it is limited. This limited amount of water spreads out over the entire bay, resulting in a smaller tsunami within the bay itself. The tsunami breakwater constructed in Ofunato Bay is the first of its kind in the world. This construction project had only just finished when, in 1968, the Tokachioki earthquake tsunami struck. This video recording reveals what happened at the time the tsunami occurred, and, in particular, the flow of the water at the entrance to the bay where the breakwater stands. Around 1.20 White-capped waves can be seen close to the entrance of the bay. To the right is the interior of the bay, to the left is the open sea. Now, as a result of the tsunami, the water is flowing out of the bay. Waves out in the ocean caused by wind are being forced back by the tsunami and do not enter the bay. The crests of the halted wind-generated waves grow higher, breaking from their peaks causing them to appear white. Around 1.42, look at the nearby coastline. The wind-generated waves are breaking white along the shore. At the same time, there are waves created by the wind. There can also be tsunami waves. 
around 2.36. As a result of the water flowing out of the bay entrance from the tsunami, it is possible to see how conditions differ from those of the surrounding sea. The width of the water flowing as a result of the tsunami is about the same width as the entrance to the bay. White foam has formed on the surface of the water, and there are no small waves as there are on the surrounding sea. One can observe that the surface seems fairly smooth with some large undulation. Here we explain the flow of the water near the entrance of the bay between 2.46 and 3.08 as a result of the flow of the tsunami in and out of the bay. To the right is the interior of the bay. 4.15 The tsunami begins now to flow back into the bay for the first time. The area directly influenced by the tsunami is connected by a white line which extends from the point of the breakwater to the right-hand side. Around 5.50 One brave fishing vessel turns to face the approaching tsunami and attempts to make its way out toward the open sea. Around 6.13 A large eddy forms in the bay. This is not unusual. If caught in the eddy, Boats will be drawn down into it and sunk. One should not underestimate this danger. <laughs>